In this video, we're going to be talking about backtesting. We're going to be talking about why backtesting is important, what exactly backtesting is, and I'm going to share with you my process for step one of backtesting, where I'm going to share my strategy, my plan, and how I aim to actually carry out my backtesting, so stick around. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Emily from the channel Mindfully Trading, where I share my journey as I grow and develop as a trader. And this video is going to be part one of a series. I haven't quite decided on how many videos yet, but it's probably going to be another two videos uh, sharing my journey back testing. And in a moment, I'm going to show you my strategy for backtesting and also we're going to jump onto the charts so that I can just share a little bit more about my process on how I aim to document my backtesting results. But first, let's just answer a few questions that you might be experiencing. So why? Why do we backtest? What is the importance of backtesting? Well, backtesting can really help to transform trading results and that's certainly what I'm hoping I'm going to find out from doing this. <laughs> Many people talk about backtesting and that's because it is literally going back in time to test a trade plan or a strategy um, and the idea behind it is that you accumulate a group of data for a currency pair. The ideal amount of trades that is generally advised is to practice on 100 trades but I'm going to target in batches of 20 because I think that breaking it down into smaller chunks makes it a little bit more digestible. <laughs> And the importance of this is it's mainly about testing a strategy and utilizing probabilities, which as we all know is what trading is about. And a strategy is what gives us an edge on the market on that probability so that we can hopefully become consistent and profitable traders. So that's why backtesting is important. It allows you to test a strategy or trade plan for a group of data over a certain amount of time so that you can gain that all important results and data from your strategy. Mainly this includes discovering the accuracy percentage rate of a strategy and the profit and loss ratio and then ultimately the end results. So over a period of time and a series of trades, what is the result of that strategy? Is it profitable? Do you make money? How much do you make? How much percentage on your account can you make? So it helps to answer all these questions and be able to take it from a backtesting and paper sort of simulated trading into incorporating it into live trades. How are we going to do backtesting? Well, that's what I'm going to show you in just a moment. Before we dive onto the charts and I'll show you the software I'm going to use to do this. First, I'm going to just share with you the notes that I've made for my backtesting plan. But most importantly, it's brew break. <laughs> so as per this video, this is part one of the series where we're focusing more on planning. So I'm not going to actually show you live backtesting in this video that will come in the next video, but we can't backtest until we have a plan of what we're backtesting. So this is by all means just as important as the other video. So keep on watching. And the way that I've approached my backtesting is I've gone through uh, different notes that I've made over the years from trading and I've kind of accumulated lots of information to form a trade plan because the most important part of backtesting is that you need to have a structure a solid set of rules to follow in your backtesting to make it consistent. There's no point backtesting if each individual trade we are testing and documenting are slightly different because the results are going to be void. There's no pattern there. We can't repeat it in a live environment. And that's the crucial part really is that we need to keep a consistent plan for each trade whilst backtesting because then we can easily take that from the demo environment to the live environment. And to do that, I've made a set of rules. So the strategy that I am going to be backtesting is the trend continuation strategy. And first of all, what I want to see in order for to find trades for this strategy to test is a clear uptrend or a downtrend. So I'm going to avoid choppy or ranging markets. I want a clear trend. Secondly, I want to identify and trade from key levels. Now this includes marking the market structure and I'm going to be using the four hourly chart for this mainly those all important support or resistance points or they can also be pivots so if they've previously been a support or resistance then they work either way that's what i'm going to mark on my charts and that will lead on to point three and point three is where i am able to use areas of confluence and for that i mean i'm going to incorporate trend lines uh, any flags and moving averages and i'll show you those on my charts in just a moment finally once i have all those things happening on the charts and I can see my setup forming, I'm going to be looking for a signal for entry. And that will include execution on close of a relevant price action signal. 
This can either be a pin bar, an engulfing bar, or a inside bar, but it has to be around those key levels. I don't just want a random signal on the charts. I want to have all of those things I've just mentioned to you working together. That's what's going to formulate my strategy. From that, I will then set my stop and target points, and this can depend on the areas on the chart because I'm going to look at a previous sort of support and resistance level so that I can try and place an accurate stop and then obviously a target as well. And depending on the time frame, but I'm predominantly going to be looking for either 1.5R or 2R. So I'm risking 1% to make 1.5% or 2% on my account. So did you get those five points? We're going to be looking for trend, support and resistance levels, price action signal, areas of confluence, and then execution and setting stops and targets. Let's jump onto the charts. Okay guys, so I've just loaded up one of the currency pairs that I'm going to focus on first for backtesting. But we're not actually going to get stuck into the logistics of backtesting. That will be on part two of the series. But just to finish this part where I'm explaining about planning, which is super important, I'm going to share with you a spreadsheet that I've created where I'm going to document all my data for the backtesting. So I've just called this backtesting trend continuation strategy and here is sheet one. Now I've created a few different sheets along the bottom as you can see here and the, what I'm thinking is that one sheet is only going to be used for one strategy and for one currency pair I'm going to have a sheet for each individual currency pair because I keep reading contradictory things about backtesting. Um, some people saying you need to have 100 records. Some people saying it needs to be for one currency pair. So to make it easier, I'm going to just split up my pairs and then I can just sort of keep adding data to each of the rows until I have a really good pool of data there to work on. So what am I collecting? Well, this will just be very simply the consecutive number of trades that we have taken, the date. Now, obviously, we're going to be back testing. We're going to be going back in time, which I'll show you on the next video. But that's where I'm going to record the date. And I'm going to start from that point and work my way forwards. I'm also going to note the time just in case, for whatever reason, I do want to go back onto the charts and check out any trade that I might have taken as part of the back testing. Forex pair, which should pretty much stay the same for each sheet that we're going to be in. Uh, whether it was a win or a loss, I'm going to be noting whether we went long or short. Um, I will make a note of the trade entry, the amount of pips I'm going to be using as a stop and then the amount of pips I'll be using as a profit target and then I've just added these two columns here because I will tick whether I managed to get my 1.5% reward, a 2% reward and I might even add a column on for 3% depending on the currency pair we might have some that are more volatile than others which is why backtesting is so important because a strategy might work for one currency pair that doesn't work for another because each currency pairs tend to have their own characteristics and their own personality. And that's why I'm trading this really. I'm, I'm really excited to get going with backtesting because I feel like it's a really good way to build experience and it's a really good way to gather a group of data um, that I have I've built up for a period of time so that I know that if I experience a period of consecutive losers during a strategy, I know because I've backtested that overall, a series of trades perspective, that that strategy works. And I think it can help to really get through on those low days when trading live when you experience losers. Moving on, the next column, I will just be making notes of the time frame. So predominantly, I'm going to be carrying out technical analysis on the four hourly chart and then the trade execution will most likely be on the one hour chart. But I might also dip into the 30 minute or the 15 minute because this is going to be a day trading strategy that I'm testing. So I'll be making a note of those to see if there are any correlations. So perhaps I experience more losers if I use the 15 minute or more winners. So one way to find out, right? Finally, the candlestick signal, so I'll make a note of that. So what were those three signals we're going to be looking for? We're going to be looking for the pin bar, the engulfing bar, or the inside bar uh, candlestick signal for an entry. And then naturally there is an end column here for notes, just to keep a note of anything I've discovered whilst I took that trade. So breaking down 100 trades into batches of 20, it doesn't sound as bad, does it, if I've got to do this 20 times? 100 seems a lot though, <laughs> but let's see how we go on. And at the top here, just to wrap it up, as you can see, I've also created some tables, which I think will be really useful so that I can see the accuracy in percentages for the data I've collected, my overall profit and loss ratio, which I'm hoping is going to be positive, and then obviously the number of trades that I've taken. And also on the right-hand side here, uh, the total winners, the total losers, and the total percentage net of that. 
So that's what I um, I have found anyway to be the important parts of data to collect and document as part of this backtesting. Uh, do you think I've missed anything out? Or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm also going to be adding a copy of the spreadsheet to the existing Forex Trade Tracker Review Pack that I do have available to download. So if you do want a copy, I'll include a link below where you can check that out. And in part two of this backtesting series, I'm going to be taking you through some live backtesting using TradingView. They've got a really great tool that you can use um, with the pro package for that. So again, if you're not with TradingView, I'll include a link below where you can check those out. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, you know, click below and then you'll get notified when part two comes out. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, drop me a like and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye. Thank you.